we are taking a look at the financial services sector on today's edition. Now, the CBN's operational guidelines for open banking in Nigeria cover many important considerations relating to different parts of the open banking system, the types of institutions involved, rules of engagement, technical specifications, consent, management, and data privacy. Apart from outlining these standards, the bigger role of the guidelines in this regulation is to promote healthy competition in the financial industry, encourage rapid financial technology innovation, and in turn make it possible for financial services consumers to leverage their valuable financial data to access more relevant and personalized services. Now, my guest, Alexander Ekok Obokam, is a Nigerian banker and engineer. After graduating with a fourth class in engineering at the Afe Babalola University, Obokam worked for SVC in the United States before founding Almond Incorporated. Now, Almond Inc. is a New York based financial technology company to provide open banking services across Africa and Asian financial institutions. Now, with a very strong presence in Nigeria and growing presence in Ghana, Almond Inc. is leading the move for better open banking adoption in Nigeria. Many thanks for joining me, Alex. Oh, well, thank you very much, Justin. All right. It is a pleasure to have you. But I know I've given a bit of a background uh, to what term um, open banking is. But just let's break it down in lay terms and explain to me what open banking is before we talk about safety and other issues. Okay. I would like to um, explain it in such a, in a, wonder, in a rather simple way. I would like to say open banking is um, a synergy between technology, data, and finance. Bringing them together, you're sharing data using technology across different financial institutions. That's the simplest way to explain it. Mm. All right, so fine. It's just like um, having an open relationship, several people <laughs> involved. <laughs> yeah, several people in it. Okay. Yeah. Even Give an it open sense. relationship, banking is about. Um, uh, relationship, first party, second party, and sometimes third party. But let's talk about um, the safety uh, and uh, other security concerns as regarding open banking. You know, how safe and how secure? Because what is uh, coming to my head right now when I talk about open banking is, uh, you know, maybe the credit system and the people who do credit scores, uh, loans, and all of that, and they have access yeah. to most uh, client, uh, you know, information. Yeah. I don't even making sense, but sometimes they are right. subject well, to <clears throat> being, well, let's say, harvested by some unscrupulous people. Yeah, well, um, the safety of open banking systems, I would say, is more or less equal to the safety of the banks. So if you believe um, in the safety of our banks, I would like to say you should also believe in the safety of open banking because most of the infrastructure is more or less connecting different banks who have their own security systems oh. to one another. Now, where you said it's used for credit scores, you're absolutely correct. Um, it's financial data. Oh. Let's say you want, to take, you want to rent a house or something, you want to pay your mortgage, um, these companies should be given access to your financial data to be sure if, oh, um, I want to give you a loan, I want to let you rent a house, I want to know if you could pay me from time to time. So it's, um, it's more or less um, exposing your financial information in a very secure way because your banks still hold all the power. Okay, fine. Um, I hear maybe, uh, I stand to be corrected, there's maybe some sort of issues associated in terms of um, uh, risks or so. There, there, there are issues um, like fraud, uh, denial of service, and of course, a man in the middle, phishing and all of that. You know, but how yeah, can, so, so okay. how can, uh, you know, the average Nigerian be protected with all of this um, innovation um, of open banking. Oh, okay. So, um, like we are Almond, um, the way our systems are designed is quite simple. We more or less give the powers, like I said earlier, to the banks. The banks are still holding this financial information. The banks are still um, the ones in charge of this financial information. All we are doing is, um, hey, Bank A, you could communicate to Bank B, and Bank B could communicate to Bank C. So. As far as you have your banking apps, you have your online banking systems, and you are sure that, okay, for instance, I bank with Union Bank, and um, I'm pretty sure that Union Bank's services are secure. Um, connecting it with First Bank, which also has a very secure system. As far as I believe and I know that Union Bank is secure, I'm safe. I don't know if that makes sense. So all these fraudulent behaviors and all this um, basically chaos in the banking system that usually happens, it's, I think... Um, 
part of one of the pitfalls of technology, and these technologies get better every day. But I would say that the strength of the banking system is equivalent to the strength of the open banking system. And uh, draw it uh, by pursue with um, the need for a centralized credit and an open yeah. banking system. How can you actually match yeah. both of so, them together? Um, I would like to say that um, I, I see open banking as the foundation to a centralized credit system. Like in Nigeria right now, it's quite difficult for you to get credit information anywhere. That's why we have all these loan apps who mm -hmm. are charging people unimaginable interest rates, 30% monthly, 40% monthly. It's because they believe that loaning to a Nigerian is far more risky than loaning to an American. So for instance, I would say in America, they have FICO, which is more or less in charge of their credit system. They have um, open banking applications like Plaid, um, Udly, which have basically formed that structure. So um, as a financial institution in America or a lending institution, I feel more comfortable lending to an American because I have access to all their financial data. But that's not the case in Nigeria. So there is a need for open bank in Nigeria to more or less strengthen the credit system. Okay, but so there's, far, there's a need. Okay, so far, if you were to analyze now, so far, I know it started in the UK and all that, but so far, how has Nigeria really taken to this open banking? And um, what uh, are some of the things that we need to be taking into cognizance that we're not doing right now? Okay, um, first things first is um, the banks, basically, um, opening up more to this idea of open banking. We have a couple of um, companies I know that have that have tried to start it. I know Okra tried it. I know um, mm. Mono tried it too. Um, but I think the issue comes with the banks. You know, um, Nigerian banks are very traditional, and you have to more or less convince them, saying, "Oh, this is good for the country. This is good for the system, and um, this has to be implemented." Yeah. So, in terms of standardizing it, I think we have to have better conversations with the Nigerian banks and with the central bank too, to be able to ensure the Nigerian banks are, you know, trust the system better. Okay, I know we talked about credit in passing, but let's look at some innovation in um, open banking in the country. And in your opinion, um, how far do you really think this innovation can actually lead to cheaper loans? Well, I think the open banking system in Nigeria is more or less two or three years old. Yeah. It's still quite new. Mm. Um, I, I rather would say that in the next five, ten years, we would have strong, strong open banking systems because Nigeria is a very quick country in terms of adaptation. Mm. Um, we would need, we would basically have a very strong um, credit ecosystem in the next ten years because I believe that open banking would be a game changer. So in terms of cheaper loans, yes, we would have very cheap loans at that time and in turn it will lead to um because the more accessible loans are to people the faster development comes that's basically more access to capital mm -hmm. and more foreign parties more international parties will be more comfortable bringing in um their money to the african scene okay fine this is also good but uh, in terms of regulation it is still um, a novel idea in Nigeria specifically, yeah. and yeah. Um, the CBN as the regulator is the one, you know, with yeah. um, the sledgehammer and all of that. In terms of regulation, how far do you really think um, the CBN has gone in terms of um, protecting the banks themselves and, of, of course, all um, players involved? Yeah, like you said um, earlier in your presentation, the central bank released a set of guidelines, which I think are pretty standard. And um, in Nigeria right now, there's no there's not much regulation towards what a company can do and cannot do. What's rather there is um, just a set of guidelines towards this has to be in place before you can talk about being um, an open banking technology provider. So I would rather say that I think the CBN has done a pretty good job with that, um, allowing the space to have some freedom to grow before um, much more regulations are being put on top. Because if you compare it with the United States, I think it's recently that you just released um, a new set of major open banking regulations. And they gave the company, because I would say the first, one of the first companies in the United States to really um, double down on open banking was Plaid, and they launched in about 2013, 2014. So it's more or less even a, a new industry in the United States, and they gave it time to grow. And now I think Plaid has a valuation of about $20 billion, and it's now they're bringing up major, major regulatory changes. So I think the Nigerian Central Bank is doing a good job in letting the industry grow before slamming it with 
Well, um, speaking of much what, more stringent regulations, yeah. Yeah, speaking of which, and the CBN trying to make the industry grow, and over time it's been talking about um, financial dipping, financial inclusion. But let's talk about yeah. open banking as one of um, these moves uh, in terms of financial inclusion. How far would you say the country has gone? I know we have some challenges in terms of um, you know, internet penetration at the rural and uh, you know, the hinterlands. So far, open banking in Nigeria, are the grassroots efforts enough? Well, I would like to say that that's like what you said. It's kind of um, more dependent on the expansion of internet services because um, you basically not be able to have access to open banking if you're systems are not all online like for instance um it's not just limited to the banks per se um i wouldn't say that um we just attach um the information from first bank to union bank the mortgage banks are also included the investment banks are also included and i would like to say that once these banks these banks also have to step up in terms of digitalization because i don't think much um, mortgage banks and um um, low-level lenders, they still do a lot of things with um, pen and paper. It's more, it's more or less digital. It's not as digitalized as it's meant to be. So I would like to say that um, we need more digitalization before we could even talk about that level of um, open banking, but it's step by step. Okay, fine. Uh, another important thing to talk about is um, the APIs and um, the importance uh, of it to, or them rather, to open banking. Can you just uh, run us through yeah. it yeah um the apis are more or less just the interfaces so um the api is is um the flow the more or less the channel between first bank and um union bank basically so okay. they are um, an api basically just connects them so in terms of it has to be in terms of safety in terms of strength of these apis and that's what we as a technology provider have to look at we our apis have to be as secure as possible i would rather say they should be um they should be hosted on platforms of, of that sort, hosted on more or less very strong cloud services. Yeah, so yeah, the APIs are just more or less the information flow channel, which that's where the technology company comes in. Like Almond, for instance, we have um, very, very secure APIs. Um, we've had some banks reach out to us that, oh, they want us to plug them into their system, into our system, which, which I think is good news in terms of Okay, I still, I still want to talk. I still want to talk about. I still want to talk about um, security because that's really uh, a yeah. very major aspect. When we talk of um, financial, um, uh, the financial yeah. services sector, security cannot be overemphasized with lots of um, cyber yeah. threat and cyber, you know, attacks, malware, and all of that. We just talked yeah. about um, um, the APIs and all. So, how far do you think they can actually enable fraud detection um, companies effectively? Oh, okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you an instance on the on, okay. um, on the use case. Say, for instance, I want to take a loan from Union Bank or let's say UBA, a commercial and, um, bank in Nigeria. Yeah, let's say com yes, a commercial <laughs> bank. Before yeah, start promoting rather, them, rather, please. rather yeah, right. simplify, yeah. yeah, commercial bank in Nigeria. Mm. Um, and the commercial bank wants my information. They go on to um, an open banking provider and they they want to access this information. I basically have to authenticate that information. I have to give them access to my banking app. So if I do not give them access to my banking information, they have no idea, they cannot get in. Oh. So it's the same thing for the hackers. That's why I said, as secure as my bank is, that's how secure my open banking network also is. Oh. I don't know if that makes sense. So, um, and I think Nigeria, and I believe not think, Nigerian banks have very secure systems. Mm. Of things. We have very secure systems. So yeah, it's a very um, like when you're when you're talking to banks, you more or less say, "Oh, hey, don't get it wrong. We are not coming to provide um, security services. As secure as your bank is, mm. that's how secure your customers are." Okay, fine. So yeah. All right, so uh, uh, as we round off right now, let's just talk about yeah. the future because, like we said, it's still um, a novel um, idea, uh, yeah. you know, in um, oh, the country. Yeah. I like to think that the future of open banking is every company in Nigeria, because every company in Nigeria is going to need access to someone's financial data. Right. Even if you sell ice cream, it's all data. That's mm -hmm. basically it. And data is very, very important in terms of making very important business decisions. So I would like to say that, yeah, it's, it's a big industry. It's an ever-growing industry. And once Nigeria taps into it properly, because in Nigeria right now, um, access to capital is a really big problem. Uh -huh. And once Nigeria is able to tap into this industry, 
the sky is, is our limit. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay, so it is actually a safe thing, and it's not something yeah. that Jen should be yeah. um, afraid no, of. It's, it's something not that something has one should be afraid of in any sense. No, it's not one something you should be afraid of. It's not anything you should be afraid of. As long as you, as, as much as you trust Opay, as much as you trust money point to your money, that's how Okay, now you're selling those brands that. yet again. But then, in future, is <laughs> a solution to high cost loans, so to speak. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It, it, would, it would reduce the cost of loans and more access, thereby giving more access to capital. So I would like to say that um, um, it's, it's a thing to be looked at for our commercial banks and it's a thing mm. to be looked at for more microfinance institutions. It's a thing to be looked at for more mortgage lenders and all across the financial spectrum. It's all financial data. Like I said, it's a synergy between technology, um, data, and financial services. Right. So at the end of the day, it's, it's rather an impressive space to begin with. All right, thank you so much. I have been speaking with Alexander Okokam. He is the founder of um, Almod Incorporated, yeah. and we have been looking on, at the adoption of open banking in Nigeria and all of the issues. Many thanks once again, um, Alex, for your time. We do appreciate it. Thank you very much, Justin. I, I'm, I was glad to be here. Have a wonderful day. All right. So you have heard it from um, Alex. Uh, open banking has actually come to stay, and is actually... Uh, Run per week so to um, centralized credit, and indeed, uh, we can talk of it being solution to high cost loans um, in the future, in as much as it is still new in the country. But that's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonia. Business Insight will return to your screen same time next time. Bye for now. Hmm.